so we're going to be trying to add rational expressions together. So let's start by adding just some rational numbers together. In order to add rational numbers, we've got to get a common denominator. So the common denominator between 8 and 3 is 24. So to get to 24, this one gets multiplied by 3, top and bottom. So you get 3 24 And the other one gets multiplied by an 8, top and bottom. So that becomes 8 24 And so your answer would be 11 24 So hopefully that's a quick review for you on adding fractions or adding rational numbers. So we can get into our more complex idea of we've got to get our common denominator and just add. So if I've got a 6b on this side and a 14a squared b squared on that side, I need to get to a common denominator. So between 6 and 14, I know that 14 would make 28, and then four, and 6 does not go into 28. So the next number up would be a 42, and 6 does go into 42. So 42 is going to be my smallest number there, so 42. And then I know I'm going to have to have an a squared and a b squared in order to get the, the next or the smallest multiple of both of those. So in order to get to 42 a squared b squared, uh, and I start at 6, I'm going to have to multiply the 6 times the 7. I'm going to have to multiply by an a squared, and I'm going to have to multiply by a b. So I need to do that to both top and bottom. Just like I did in the previous one, we multiply top and bottom to get them to be the same. So 7 times 5 is 35. And then I'm going to have a to the fourth b. Okay, then I can bring down my plus sign. Now I'm going to do my other side. If I was at 14, I would multiply 14 times 3 in order to get to 42. And I already have my a squared and my b squared, so I'm pretty much good for, with my letters. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by 3. So 9 times 3 is 27. And that's all the further we're going to go with that one. That's our final answer at this point. We're just going to leave it there. Let's go on to our next example. So that was basically example um, 4. Nope, that was example 3. So now we're going to move into example 4. Example 4 gets a little bit more complicated. And so now we've got binomials on top and bottom. We've got to get to a common factor. So I've got to factor out my bottoms to find out what I've got. So this becomes a 3x minus 5 whenever I take, use my distributive property. And the other side becomes a 6x minus 5. So then I can see they're not really that much different. My second one's just 2 times bigger than the other one. 3 times 2 is 6. So if I multiply the first time, first side by 2, top and bottom, I'm pretty much there. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. And so that's going to become 2x plus 20 over, and then I've got my 6x minus 30. And then I've got what was left over on the other side which was minus 3x, and it's a minus sign out here, so that means there's assumed parentheses in here, so don't forget to move that negative sign all the way across here. So it's a minus 3x minus 15, and that's going to be a huge mistake right there, is that's a negative sign, and you've got to distribute that across that second term on the top. The bottom's going to stay the same. Remember, when you subtract fractions, the bottom stays the same, and the top, we've got to distribute that negative sign. And then we want to simplify this up a bit. Um, so let's look at, we've got a 2x minus 3x, which would be a negative x. And then you've got 20 minus 15, which is a plus 5. And then when we factored out the bottom, we had the 6, and that was an x minus 5. And then again, we're really close here. We've got the minus x plus 5. So if you just take out that negative sign, Right, remember that thing keeps popping up. We take out that negative 1, that becomes an x minus 5, and then a 6, x minus 5. That reduces, and our final answer is negative 1, 6. So you've got to keep going until you're all the way to the end. You've reduced everything you possibly reduced.